Have you ever just been sitting at your desk working, got your handy dandy portable drive with you, and then you get up for a second and this happens? Unfortunately, that's happened to a lot of us way too often. And if you have anything important on that drive, you may very well have just lost everything. Now it never fails. Every single time I talk on my channel about backing up your data, I get tons of comments from people saying, use a NAS server, use a NAS server. Okay, I'll bite. Let's talk about NAS servers. So this is the DS923 Plus Synology NAS server. And if you don't know what a NAS server is, let me take a second to explain what it is and why you need one. So for the average consumer, generally when they consider how to back up their files, they usually use one of two pretty common methods. One is a USB flash drive, and the other is a USB powered portable device. Now, these are what's known as DAS drives, DAS, direct attached storage. Basically, all that means is they physically connect to your computer and you can easily transfer files back and forth. And those are great. They can pop in your pocket, they can slide into your laptop bag, and you always have them available. And they're also pretty inexpensive, which makes them a great backup solution. Now, the downside is what happens if you drop your drive or your flash drive accidentally gets washed in your jeans? Well, now all of a sudden your backups are worthless. If you're lucky enough to still have the data on your original computer, you can certainly go buy another one of these or another one of these, copy all the files back over and you're back in business. But that's kind of a pain. And for a lot of people, this is all you need. So just keep that in mind, but let me explain to you the benefits of having a Synology and you might want to reconsider your backup solution. So one of the primary benefits of having a NAS server is what is called redundancy. Now, a lot of people just back up their files to a flash drive or a portable, and they don't think anything about it. And again, if they break, no big deal, you go buy another one. But over time, that can get expensive, especially if you don't buy quality drives, and you're like me and you're kind of clumsy and you just knock things around. So one of the cool things about the NAS server is it has built-in redundancy. If one of the drives fails, no big deal, you don't lose a single thing. I'll show you how that works in just a second. One of the things that people are concerned with nowadays is their personal privacy. Things like OneDrive and Google Drive, Dropbox, Box.com, even iCloud. You're putting your data effectively on another computer somewhere else on the internet. And if you don't really know who's looking at that data, you have to just trust that the company says that they're not. The benefit of a NAS server is all your data is controlled locally by you, nobody else ever sees it, and you can access it from anywhere in the world. So basically you're running your own cloud server. So one of the advantages is obviously if you are paying for cloud storage, you can do the same exact thing with the NAS server and over time it will pay for itself. Me personally, I pay a few extra dollars a month for my Apple iCloud backup. I pay a few extra dollars for a OneDrive backup. I pay a few extra dollars here and here and here. And over time, that does add up. So the folks at Synology sent me this server to show you not only how it can benefit you, but also how simple it is to set up. And at the end of the day, you might find that it's actually a better backup solution for you long-term. And there's about a billion things you can do with this thing. And I'm gonna cover the ones that interest me the most, but I'm gonna show you all the different things it can do. Now, if you're just a home user or maybe have a really small business and you don't have the need to back up over 20 terabytes of data, that's okay. Synology has drives that fit just about any solution you might need and quite affordable. We'll get to that in a little bit. For today's purposes, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it and then you can decide if it's something that might work for you. So let me first start by explaining my specific needs. As you can see, as a small business owner, I've got a lot of stuff to back up. Between all of these drives right here, it's about 18 terabytes. Now, not all of that is stuff I absolutely need to keep, but a lot of it is client data, stuff that is quite important to me, and if I lost it, I'd be in some serious trouble. In addition to that, I've probably got another four to six terabytes of stuff here. Now, of course, I've got stuff here and there and everywhere, but the Synology NAS server is gonna fix all that. So Synology makes it actually super simple for you to figure out what storage method is gonna work best for you. So if you go to the Synology website and you scroll down, click on NAS selector, and then it's going to walk you through all the different options and you can figure out based on this, which one works for you. So for the vast majority of people, you're probably gonna choose home or small office, and that's what I'm gonna choose. Then it lets you choose which of these is most applicable to your needs. And this will determine the type of storage that you're gonna use. 
So you have file server and synchronization, which basically means maybe you want to have one NAS server in an office and everybody in the office is going to access that server. Then you have another one that's data backup, which is taking all of your personal stuff and moving it over to a backup drive on your server. The next one is a multimedia hub which allows you to play and share your photos, video, music across your network. Then there's productivity, which allows you to synchronize documents and spreadsheets and things like that. And then the last one is more geeky. You can run virtual machines on your network. So the picker says, pick the top three that you would like to run on your NAS. First of all, I know I want data backup. And I'd also like to maybe sit in my living room and stream movies or photos. So I'm going to choose multimedia. So the last one I'm going to choose is file server and synchronization. I'd like to be able to access my files from pretty much anywhere. The next question, how many users or devices are you planning to connect? Mine is probably going to be five. My PC, my phone, maybe my tablet or a laptop, and maybe one other device. So most likely one to five. On the next page, you can select other features that might be of interest to you as far as upgradability, how many network ports you need, other things like that. You can check those out. Now on this screen, based on what I've already said, it's gonna recommend these three models, but I need something that has expandability and will grow with my business. So I'm gonna choose a four to six bay NAS server. Right off the bat, super user friendly, it basically tells you exactly what you need based on a few simple questions. So let me kind of explain how the network attached storage and redundancy actually works. There was a situation where I lost a lot of private stuff and a lot of photos from my childhood that I don't have anymore, this would have solved that problem. So basically the way it works, in this case, again, this is a four bay, they do make two bays and larger. You're gonna have one drive in here. In this example, this would be one eight terabyte drive. In this bay, I'm gonna have another eight terabyte drive. Right now, so I'm gonna have these two drives plugged into the system and they are gonna be working together as one drive. If this first drive fails, and remember, these two drives are mirroring each other. So if this drive fails, I can literally pull this out, get a new drive, pop it in. This starts mirroring to this, and I've lost nothing. No downtime, and all my data is 100% protected, and it's not on the cloud. Now that you hopefully kind of understand how it works, let me show you how to set it up and how easy this is to get started. But first, I gotta plug my drives in. First thing I do is simply lift this up, pull it out. Do the same thing for the second one. These drive rails have a little plastic piece. You just pull off the side, just like so. Take your hard drive, whatever size it is, set it in the tray, and you just snap the side rails right back on. So we've got both drive rails reconnected. All we have to do is slide this gently back in and connect it. Second drive is in. We're ready to go. Hardware setup is easy. Plug one end of the included ethernet port into your device and the other into your modem. Plug the power into the back of the Synology. Press the power button and wait for it to initialize and you'll get some status lights and a beep and you're ready to go. So once you have all the hardware connected, setting it up and configuring it is super simple. You're gonna wanna type find.synology.com and it's gonna scan your network and find that Synology drive. As you can see here, it found the device, and now all we have to do is connect to it. And now it's going to give you the opportunity to go ahead and set up your new Synology box. Now, one of the great things about setting up a Synology is they make it very easy to follow. Just basically yes or no questions, asking you what you want in language that you can easily understand. It takes absolutely no technical skills whatsoever to completely get through this entire thing. It is actually as simple as setting up a new Windows machine, maybe even simpler. The file system is very similar to a Windows file system with drag and drop capabilities, right click to create new folders, all kinds of different options. If you're a Windows Linux or Mac user, you're going to be very familiar with this type of layout. It's super simple. Anybody can do it. And the best part is, is Synology has an amazing support system online where you can look up pretty much any question you have if you can't find the answer on your actual server itself. Now you've seen the basics of how the Synology works. It's basically like another computer on your network. But the advantage is, is it is a hundred times more powerful because it gives you complete control over every file, every folder, who can see it, when they can see it, from where they can see it, 
in your home office or in a cafe in Italy, you can remotely access any of the files on your network instantly. But that's not even the coolest part. Synology has this thing called a package center, which is basically a bunch of other plugins to allow you to do pretty much anything you want. Check this out. So in the disk station manager, if you click on package center, look at all of these available features for you. Tons of cool programs that you can use. Let me go through some of these and show you what I'm excited about. Now, my wife and I like to sit around the house and just listen to music without ads all day. I and mean, I've got a ton of music on my computer. Well, there's a cool app called Audio Station. You just click on the app that you want. It goes and downloads it from the Synology website. And just like that, it's installed. Here's another one I like. It's called Plex Media Server. What this does is it actually gives you access through your network to any movies that you have installed on your computer and you can watch them just like you would on Netflix on your computer. Go through a couple steps through the Plex Media Server, get your claim token, click next, and then done. And then it's gonna set up this media server for you. This is so cool. If you wanna connect your security system to your Synology and have it automatically record to your Synology, you can install Surveillance Station. There's office applications, all kinds of viewers, set up your own VPN server. You wanna run your own web server, you can do that. Your own wiki page, web development. There are so many applications that you can use with this Synology, it is just mind blowing. Now I know I went on and on about some of these cool features that are included in the Synology NAS, and honestly, I'm excited to try all of them. I'm not gonna go through that today. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video later and break down each of those individual applications and what they can do, but, I wanted you to see just how many features and how many programs are available for this thing. It is amazing. That being said, let's focus on the things that are important to me, which are probably important to you. And that's making sure that our personal data is not only backed up, but protected and safe. I wanna create a folder, and in this case, I'm gonna call it client data. And I use that folder on pretty much every drive that I have. If you've watched any of my videos, I'm sure you've seen my four or five or 12 drives with client data in them. I wanna take the client's folder that I have stored on my computer. I just wanna go from File Explorer and drag that folder right here into the client data folder. Just like that, it's gonna back up that entire folder. Drag any other folder I want. Just drag another one right there. So now I know with just a couple clicks in a Windows File Explorer type interface, that anything that I need to absolutely be 1000% sure is gonna be safe, I can just click on it, drag it, drop it onto my Synology NAS. The file station and the software are gonna take care of everything else. Any of these drives that I have in my computer or these drives back here fail, no big deal. I've got them all backed up. And the added bonus is I don't have to use cloud storage anymore. You know, another feature that I love that I haven't even started experimenting with is the fact that I can back up my iPhone and my iPad directly to my NAS and they're available anywhere in the world. And that saves me from spending extra money for my extra cloud storage on my phone. The way Drive Server works is basically like any other backup, like OneDrive or Carbonite or any other kind of backup service. It monitors for changes and then adjusts accordingly. So it's gonna run in the background and anytime I make a change on this portable drive, it's automatically gonna sync with the Synology server. So I know when I go to bed at night, if my computer explodes, no big deal. Everything I need is backed up to that server. Here's another cool use for the Synology server. In my local computer business, I tend to keep all my clients' data on my drives. And sometimes the clients just want their files or they just want specific files, but they don't need everything. I can put everything on the Synology server, create a special link just for this person so they can remotely access their own personal folder, download and save whatever they want, delete files however they wanna do it. That saves me from having to pull them off a computer, store them on a drive, turn around, put them on another drive, then turn around and give it back to the client. Just give everybody access to their own unique folder, download, delete, whatever you want. It's your data. In the past, NAS servers have always been something that I thought maybe I really would never need. As my local business grew and my YouTube business is growing, I'm realizing now the importance of having the ability to access these files, not only at a moment's notice, but potentially anywhere in the world. I'm not gonna lie, this is actually a pretty darn good solution for me.
So I hope after watching this video, you have a better understanding of what a NAS server is and whether or not it meets your needs. And you may still be asking yourself, is that really something that is gonna be useful for me? So let me give you my opinion on whether a NAS server is practical for you. If for example, you are a college student and you just keep everything on your computer and your flash drive, you don't need a NAS server. If you're just someone who sits around the house and maybe has some documents and photos or whatever, but not a ton of stuff and you've got it backed up, you don't need a NAS server. If you are maybe a small office with two, three, four people and you collaborate on files throughout the day, or you may be at risk of losing data from either a malware attack or a power surge, a small NAS server, like maybe a two bay, might not be a bad idea for you. If you're a small growing business, you absolutely should go that route and possibly even consider a four bay NAS solution. You can start off with two smaller drives and expand as your business grows. Now for me, this really works out well because I have a ton of data and also being a business owner who's responsible for client data and also keeping up with all my social media stuff and YouTube, it really works out well. I literally set it up and it just does everything automatically. I don't have to remember to back up anything like that. It's pretty awesome. And it's really going to work out well for my needs. So I'm really thankful for Synology sending that device over because I absolutely love it. But again, it's not for everybody. Now, here's some of the downsides. A NAS server isn't exactly inexpensive, but if you think about what you get for the money, if you think about the expandability, about the guaranteed data protection, if you consider that your data is going to be 100% private, if you factor in the fact that you'll never have to back up to the cloud again, if you factor in that your data is accessible to you anywhere in the world, anytime, 24 hours a day, if you factor in that you'll never have to buy another flash drive or portable drive again, or remember what drive has what data on it, or go on a trip and forget your portable drive, these are things that can help offset the cost of that NAS server if you think of it in a practical term like that. Additionally, the NAS server is just a computer. It doesn't come with any hard drives. So there's an extra expense for that. But if you wanted to start off with a smaller NAS server with smaller hard drives, you can eventually upgrade to bigger drives and even a bigger NAS server. So this is something that over time, if it's practical for you, is definitely worth the investment and I would highly recommend it. But again, it's not for everybody. Regardless, I hope today I demonstrated to you what it is, how it works, and maybe helped you decide whether or not this is something that works for you. So as always, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.